One of the questions that we get the most often when we're talking about bed ramp assessments is how long does it take? How long does it take to get through the assessment process and what happens after to actually get to that authorization? So today we're going to discuss some of those specifics relative to the stages of the FedRAMP assessment. Hi, I'm Marcy Womack, Federal Services Practice Leader here at Shulman. Shulman has um, about 10 years of experience performing federal services, especially in the FedRAMP space, and we do hundreds of, of federal assessments annually. So we're gonna be talking about the FedRAMP assessment timeframe. So in another video, Doug Barbin was talking about the stages of the FedRAMP assessment. We have stage one and stage two. Stage two is where we do the bulk of interviews and technical review of evidence and that type of thing. So that start of phase two is the interview week. And we use that as kind of the foundation for the rest of the schedule and timeline. And so when we kind of back into stage one, we're gonna base that off of the interview week. And so we'll take that interview week and say, back that up eight weeks and we'll deliver the information request list. This is a list of the evidence and artifacts that you need to provide to us across the both stages of the assessment for us to be able to execute our testing. There are a few other milestones that happen during stage one. One of those is you'll have an opportunity, a couple of two to three week periods to actually collect the evidence that we're requesting for stage one and then provide that to us. From there, we move into about one to two weeks of reviewing that documentation, documenting that in the security assessment plan or the SAP, and then we providing that SAP to you. And during that time, we may perform some interviews and some authorization boundary reviews to really make sure we understand the scope of your boundary for the assessment to ensure that we have requested the right, right information and that we can complete the, the SAP for stage one. Stage one, we're looking at policies, procedures, all of the appendices or attachments of your system security plan. And then in stage two, we are looking at more technical evidence. So uh, configurations, uh, specific alerts or logs or output from those alerts and logs, that type of thing. The due dates will be adjusted. So that way you have the appropriate due dates for your stage one evidence versus your stage two. And that allows you to get a head start on the stage two evidence collection um, because traditionally it is, is a bit more technical and requires tapping um, additional resources and additional teams, perhaps outside of the compliance team that we might normally interface with. And once we start that stage two process, so you have the IRL, you'll submit the requests to us for the evidence, we will then have that interview week. The interview week really sets up the remainder of stage two, which is the bulk of our testing. And so we will interview your subject matter experts. We'll wanna understand how controls are actually implemented, ensure that there's consistency among your documentation, what we're hearing in interviews, and then also what we're, what we're seeing in the evidence that we've requested and that you've provided. And so we have one week of interviews. It's traditionally like four days and we use that extra day to kind of do some cleanup. Um, and then from there, we move into four to five weeks of remote testing. And so that's where we're doing deep dives of all of the evidence provided. We're documenting that those testing procedures in our test case procedure workbook, which is a deliverable within the FedRAMP program. And then um, from there, we deliver the draft SAR, Security Assessment Report. And throughout this, this life cycle, we're having weekly status meetings. You, We have a no surprises policy, so if we think there's an issue, we'll let you know, because we wanna make sure that there's an opportunity to either better understand or provide you an opportunity to resolve that during testing. Once we provide the draft report, that gives you an opportunity to review it for um, any updates. Maybe there was an inconsistency or maybe you thought that something was remediated. Um, it gives us an opportunity to resolve any of those issues, make clarifications, and then we'll provide the final report. Um, we do not provide the final report until you give us approval to do so. So we wanna make sure that, that all parties are happy. And then the last piece of this is what happens after we deliver the SAR. Um, all of the right people have the report in hand the timeline can vary. And so when we think about this, typically an initial assessment, the, the report goes to your authorizing agency. They take however much time they need to review the report, um, ask any questions of you as the cloud service provider. And then typically we may, we may meet with them to answer questions about the report and about our testing. And then they will issue an agency authorization. Once that agency authorization is issued, then the report as well as that authorization goes to the FedRAMP program management office or the PMO. 
and they start their FedRAMP review. And it's another level of review. There's typically a meeting associated with that where they reviewed the package and um, they provide comments or feedback or questions. And both the cloud service provider, you and Shellman as a 3PAO are going to resolve those comments and go to the meeting prepared to um, discuss any, any questions they may have or say, hey, these are the updates that have been made as a result of the feedback received. And at that point, then you'll receive the FedRAMP authorization. The question is how much time that takes, and it really just depends on um, the how much level of effort the agency takes to review the package to issue that authorization, and then what the FedRAMP PMO queue is like, because they are reviewing many, many organizations and packages from FedRAMP RARs to, to in initial assessments and annual assessments. So sometimes their queue can um, have a little bit of a backlog, so it just depends in terms of timing on what those backlogs look like across the, all, the, all the parties. So in summary, when we think about the assessment process for an initial assessment, it's about three to four months of actual assessment time from the time that we issue that first information request list to the time that you get that final security assessment report or SAR. And then from there, it kind of goes into the, the queue of the government and, and the speed that they're able to work in. If you have questions about our timeline or maybe how your situation or your scenario impacts the timeline or you know really how to, how to move into next steps, contact us, fill out our contact us form on the website and a member of our federal team will reach out to you.